Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm pretty new to all this YouTube stuff, so bear with me a little bit. I've got a couple of cool videos uploaded over the years, but I'm going to start trying to upload more videos with good DIY information on cars, boats, motorcycles, as well as bringing some adventure to the channel with some trips and camping and racing and things like that. Um, but I really hate long YouTube intros, so let's get right to it. Today we're going to be talking about seacocks. Specifically, through hull seacocks under the water line on boats. Let's get right to it. Let's start by talking about what is a seacock. This is a seacock. It is a marine grade brass fitting that is an on off ball valve for under the water line situations where you need to take water in to either flush your head or cool your engine. In the assembly, there are a few components here. Let's start from the outside and work in. This is the through hull mushroom. This will be actually outside your hull. Your hull will be here. And this allows a complete seal. It is marine grade bronze, so you won't get the corrosion like you would with brass, and it's much more durable than a nylon, which in my opinion should never be used, especially, especially under the waterline. This is a retaining nut that would clamp it on. In this application, we won't be using this. The other components are a backing plate. Now, the new standards for a seacock are these flanged bases. And these three bolts would be through your hull from the outside to here. So everything in this assembly needs to be sealed. This backing plate provides you with the extra strength on that section of the hull to give this a good base to mount to. So from the outside, this will be sealed in your hull. Your hull will be here. On the inside, you'll have the backing plate, which will be epoxied to the hull and then your actual seacock will then be bolted some cases through the hull in my case we're going to do it a little differently i'll explain in a bit and that will give you your watertight assembly when the right adhesives and the right Silica, or the right sealants are used in this situation lastly you have your 90 degree it may be different in your application on my boat i need a 90 degree to get the water to the head so with that being said let me explain what was on my boat so in doing spring cleaning on my boat i discovered that the quote unquote seacock for the head fresh water not only is it subpar but it was also leaking this is what I have taken out of the boat. Now I can explain all of these things and why they, this is completely wrong. So let me take this apart for you. First of all, your elbow is plastic. In my opinion, plastic should never be used on under the waterline situations. This is not professional advice. This is just my DIY information. So take that as you will, but I would never use plastic in this situation. This is also plastic. This is just a standard NPT or national pipe thread ball valve. This is not an actual marine seacock. Threaded onto that is a brass through hull mushroom, similar to the one I just purchased, just 35 years old, and the backing plate, which was made of wood, which as you can see has deteriorated quite a bit. So, we can start by saying these materials, I would never use plastic for this. Also, a through hull mushroom is straight thread. A MPT ball valve will be national pipe thread, which has a slight taper to it. So these threads, although they seem to fit just fine, are not designed to go together and form a perfect seal. The big problem with this is if you were to fall and hit this or uh, something fell and hit this or trying to turn it off quickly in an emergency situation, there is a chance that you could break the seal here or even crack the plastic or even worse, 
break the brass down here right at this nut because this nut is all that is holding it onto the boat. That is why the new standards and the way it should be done is with these flanged feet. This gives it a lot more surface area for lateral load. The standard, I believe, don't quote me on this, but is 500 pound tensile strength downward or sideways on this fitting for one minute is what it must withstand to be up to standard. And this will get you there when installed properly. This is a travesty. I am glad I caught this when I did so I can take care of it and do it properly. And hopefully I can give you guys some good information along the way as to how this is going to go. As I said earlier, I'm not going to be bolting the holes through the hull because my old seacock, quote unquote, didn't have the three holes drilled through the hull. I don't want to really drill another three holes through my hull and just cause three more potential leak points. So in that case, I picked up this backing plate. The company Groco is who makes this, and it comes with three inserts that you put in these holes and pound in with a hammer and it will give you a countersunk thread to then thread the bolts into without going all the way through the hull. I plan on using grade 8.8 .8, 3 quarter inch bolts for this. They fit perfectly through the flange fitting and the brass insert or the bronze insert and I'm planning on epoxying this to the boat permanently with these pressed in from the back and then continuing with the standard seacock installation. This is designed for two different size seacocks. I can't remember the part numbers exactly for the rest. This is BB-1. It is for the three quarter inch and one inch seacocks. My seacock happens to be a three quarter inch because that's the hole that's in my boat and I feel like that works. So you would line up these, figure out which holes line up, and that, those are the three that you want to pound your three fittings into. Make sure to do that before installing this because you're going to want to pound them in from the bottom side. The side that will be epoxied to the hull is the side they need to be pounded in from. I wanted to give you guys a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the old quote-unquote seacock to the new proper seacock. Um, the hull would be represented where the screwdriver is here between the backing plates and the mushrooms. The mushrooms will be coming in from the outside. You'll have the hull, then the backing plate. Again, old rotted wood versus new. I believe this is con considered a G10 fiber board, which is an epoxy resin impregnated fiberglass. All of the fittings from the elbow to the seacock to the through hull are all marine grade bronze. Do not use your yellow brass from Home Depot or Lowe's. They will deteriorate incredibly quickly in this situation because this is constantly exposed to water. This is under the water line. This is just all plastic, mismatched threads, rotted wood. We're just going to throw this in the garbage. I meant to talk to you earlier about, I mentioned not using this nut. With the old valve, that nut is what clamped down onto the backing plate. That is what secured it. This was the entire footprint of the securing lock nut. With the new valve, you don't use the lock nut and instead bolt the flange foot directly to the backing plate. This provides a lot more lateral strength. Now, let's talk about what you're going to need to tackle a job like this. In part two, I'm going to discuss the actual process and method of getting this thing back in the boat, as well as discuss what it took to remove this one. So let's talk about what you're going to need to get this done. We'll start with the materials. Let's start by talking about 
how are we going to glue this backing plate down to the hull? Well, first of all, you've got to make sure you've got the surface prepped really well, cleaned really well. You want an absolutely perfect surface to mate this to. I'll explain that while I'm at the boat in part two. For now, let's just talk about what you're going to need. To adhere this to the hull, I've chosen to use West Systems Thicken Epoxy Adhesive. It's a gap filling epoxy with a self metering cartridge. I don't plan on using the self metering cartridge. I'll just dispense it and mix it on my own, but this will allow me a rock hard permanent solution to mount this backing plate. The next part will be to seal the mushroom on the outside of the boat, as well as seal the flange to the backing plate. What I've chosen for this, and there's a lot of argument about this, I've chosen 3M Fast Cure 4200. There's also 4000, there's 5200, there's a, another product that I can't remember the name of right now, um, and Lifecock, that is it. The other one that I've heard good results is Lifecock. Um, the 3M variants, the 4,000, 4,200, and 5,200. 5,200 seems to be very commonly used by boat yards and marine services, but 3M recommends 5,200 for absolute permanent situations. I would say for mounting the top of a hull to the base of the hull or in larger houseboats, maybe I'm sorry, larger sailboats mounting the keel to the hull, something that you don't see ever having to do for the entire life of the vessel. I would use 5200. For something like a seacock, just in case I need to get back in there and do something, I'm going to use the 4200, which as you can see, there's permanent, removable. This is right in between as a semi-permanent. It has the same exact sealing properties as both the 4000 and the 5200, the only difference is the adhesive part of it. 5200 will have about twice the tensile strength adhesive that this has, and 4000 is just a sealant with no adhesive at all. I feel like this is a good compromise, so that's what I'm gonna use. This stuff can get incredibly messy. So something I'm gonna try this time, I've never done this before, but I've heard that lighter fluid can be used to clean up the mess. You don't want to use anything with any kind of alcohol in it because it will prevent this 4200 or 4000 or 5200, whichever you choose. Um, it will affect the curing time and the curability of the sealant. I also am going to be using standard blue Loctite. This is actually a... Uh, a brand called Kema, but you can buy Permatex or various other brands at pretty much any parts store or West Marine or anything like that. I'm going to be using that on the bolts that actually secure the through cock to the backing plate, just to be sure that they don't come out. I've also got some Teflon tape for when I'm lining this up with the seacock through it. I want to make sure I have this covered in Teflon tape so the epoxy does not bond the mushroom as well because this will need to be installed as the very last piece once everything else is mounted. So this is just to protect the mushroom from bonding with the epoxy. As far as tools go, I've got the good old adjustable wrench. Never know when you're going to need it. A hammer to hammer in... This will be perfect for taking off the big nut or reinstalling it if you're using that way. Hammer to hammer in the bronze inserts. I've got a wood chisel, which is a convenient tip for installing and uninstalling the mushroom. These have two notches in there. And there's a special wrench you can buy that is meant to go in and lock these and allow you to turn this. A quick cheater is to be able to, you find a uh, wood chisel, and this one happens to be three quarter inch, which is the size of the hole. And you can slide that in there and it becomes almost like a big screwdriver. It doesn't allow you much torque though. So another cheater method is to find a regular box end wrench Insert the open end till it catches the lugs and use a long screwdriver like a T-handle. This will 
allow you to get a bit more leverage when twisting, either tightening or loosening the mushroom. So I've got those in my toolbox as well. An absolute must is some gloves. I don't want this stuff all over my hands. I've also got some little clamps that'll fit inside the hole in case I want to clamp it from the inside. As well as a variety of half inch drive that is the size of the bolt that'll be going down. I've got a couple extensions, a swivel, because when you're working with through holes, oftentimes you are in incredibly tight spaces. So I just got a couple of those, an extra extension, um, and two different ratchets, one a flex head and one a standard. I've also got blue painter's tape that I plan on taping off the back side of the threads on the back plate when I epoxy it down. That'll ensure that when the back plate is clamped to the hull, epoxy does not get inside these threads. And as far as the prep goes, I've got a couple different grits of sandpaper. This is 80 and 120, as well as a flap disc on an angle grinder to really ensure that there's no residue left over from the old back plate and we'll have a good clean surface to bond the new backing plate to. That pretty much covers everything you're going to need. I plan on finishing this up when I'm actually up at the boat in part two and that's where we'll talk about how to install everything, how to use the lubricants, how to tighten everything and how to make sure this is going to last forever or as long as we can humanly hope for and make sure you don't have any leaks. Thanks again for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe, give it a like. Um, it helps me out a lot and I'm hoping to bring you guys a whole bunch more content. Thanks a bunch.